do we need to go back over? You're the one here, Evelyn, so I'm just going to talk to you. Okay. Do we need to go back over um, Module 3, or, or do you have it? And I remember um, I said I'm Module sure 3 is one. quite the lift. I, I worked and worked on that one. Do you one. want to I go back I'm over it or not? I think I'm good to go on that one. I had sent you a few texts, and you kind of helped me through at that point. Okay. Um, I don't mean it to be... I don't mean it to be onerous, but, you know, this is the time of the semester. Uh, in fact, I had kids in my class uh, Monday and Tuesday night who were asking about uh, fall break next week, and they were calling it midterm break. And I said, well, you know, it depends upon the professor. Some folks call it midterm break. Some people call it fall break, it's really not the midterm. We're not halfway through. No, it would be nice. in this particular course, we are almost through. And so if you think, yeah, you will be. You would think of this KB Principles textbook as sort of a, uh, a, a midterm. You know, it's sort of the lift. And the reason why I spend so much time in here, because the next two modules, are pretty much uh, cookbook. I mean, they're they're pretty much. Here's what you're doing. The knowledge building principles really do inform you about the purpose of what your online class should be. And that is, the purpose of an online class ought to be that that people's ideas about the class uh, become front and center that the idea that people share uh, information, not just singularly, but, but in groups, you know, that takes all kinds of forms, as we'll see when we actually get to building inside of Schoology. But that's why we, we take the time with the KB principles. I have never found anything in reading uh, I think Terry Anderson's stuff that we read way back when um, is very informative. But what I like about what Marlene did with the knowledge building principles is she tried to say, what does this look like in terms of the atmosphere in a classroom, which is where she originally had this intended to be. In other words, kids, real classrooms with real people in them. And then later on, as the technology grew, uh, we came up with a program called Knowledge Forum, which was a very, very simple uh, database that collected kids' ideas into what were called notes that they could share with each other. And they could go into... Uh, into shared rooms, and they could show each other what they had written about, and um, we could put pictures, and we could put all kinds of stuff in there. The only thing I have done on that before anybody thought of Schoology, Blackboard, or Edmodo. So that structure, you know, no longer, but I still think these principles still hold up under examination. And in the in the Assignment, it's basically define the principles in your own. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, and then when we get down to respond to each classmate, because. Go ahead, respond, the only thing you haven't done. There's one more person uh, taking the course. Do I need. I, I think there was. Is there one more person? Okay. Right, and she's, I can see, in fact, right, and all we're doing, we're, we're not going to make yeah. this a, let's go in and look. I think it's Jessica. We're not going to make this a big deal, okay? What I'm looking for in here 
would be that you've attempted to create slides that answer those prompts. Now, I have That's mine all. on VoiceThread. Yeah, see, there's Jessica's right there. And from what I was looking at today, I think all, where she is right now is basically she's built a front page and she's starting to put in pages that answer, yeah. So see, here's all of the... Mine? Mm -hmm. Where is it? it? It's on there, I hope. Let's go look. Yes. Okay. So you say you have yours in here? Yes. All right, let me back up. Uh, I'm not, let me get on voice thread. Do you see Jessica's as well? Well, maybe I didn't post it in the right um uh, Thing, but it was on, hers was on there and there was a, a whole group. So what have I not done to get it in there? Well, now I'm not seeing my... I can see Jeff because I can't see mine anymore. All right. Let me show you. I'll show you. As long as you can see it, you're okay. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and start building one. And I'm going to create a new one. Right. And so my question to you is, and that's what I'm getting ready to show you, uh, let me just find a, something I can throw in there. So I'm going to throw this in there, and I'm going to say right. test. Yes. And I'm going to save it. Well, and it's going to eventually load in this I'm, PowerPoint. I'm even so this button right here, latte. share and return the course. If you don't do that, then it's gone. So when I, when I click on share and return yes. the course, and then it says right don't here. Don't tell me I've lost it, because if you have, I'll cry. <laughs> oh, you have. All righty, let me go over to live text and let's see. I'm going to get rid of that thing I just threw in there. Now, let me look down through here, because this is all of them. There it was. No, Jessica? Well, we're not going to say you lost it just yet. That, that's the one I did this summer. Yes. These are all the different ones. There it is. No, Spencer County Digital Citizenship. That's the one you did for 580. Knowledge building. Right. There's page. Yes. So when you put it into the live text, you put in the link, right? drop in here and find it. Let's see, that was module three. Is that one there? Okay, maybe I need, when I go to Boystrand Home, 
under my name is uh, mine and Jessica's and one more. So maybe I've got it in the wrong. Uh, Okay. It's there. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, it's not a big deal. It's there. And as you can see, when I go into uh, live text and click on it. I probably did. Okay. That's, you might have saved it into another, into your core, into your home. Okay. But it's no big deal because I'm seeing it, and that's all that matters. Now, if I click over here, let's see what else we see. Yeah. See, so I'm in Evelyn's. When you started, okay. the first this time you started, we found it. <laughs> an individual. Okay. Instead of course. It's no big deal, hon. It's fine. Because the link always takes me back to, you. to where I mean, it is. You know, That's no I big deal. Something else. Now, did you want me to look uh -huh. at it? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had the same thing happen last night in the class that I does mean, the mayor book, and words, everybody um, was freaking uh, out. And I said, just, everybody, just relax. You know, this stuff doesn't just disappear. It it definitely it's here somewhere. Nope, 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 nope. The only the only problem is, and I've had people do this, they'll go through and make something, and they'll exit out, and they won't click on that share button. Well, yeah, it's now gone. Yes, I am. All right, you ready for me to do Quality Matters? This won't take very long. This is actually pretty easy. So quality matters. Um, quality matters is a set of standards, a rubric that was created for the design of online courses. Okay, here we go. It's very straightforward. It breaks it down into these areas. Think of these areas as like a uh, fill in the blank. So the first thing it wants to see in a course that meets the quality matters standard is that you have a course overview and introduction. So if you think about it, I'm going to scroll fast here, so it makes you car sick. <laughs> Don't watch. But if you think about it, when you come into mm -hmm. this course, the first thing you do is you land on this page right here. Okay? And the whole idea of this is to give you an overview of the course. And that's what Quality Matters is saying. They're saying that there are certain things that you have to have in a course for it to have meaning and structure. It's more an organizational tool, whereas knowledge building principles is very much a philosophical tool. This is very much an organizational tool, and that's why I like it. Because I can sit down and I can say, okay, so we're looking for your course overview. Uh, hi, I'm your teacher. We are going to be learning this stuff. Uh, we'll be doing this for the next three weeks. We'll be doing this for the following three weeks. And then learning objectives, well, we know what that is. Okay. Yeah, that's standards. That's just you saying, hey, this is what we're going to learn. And here's what it's based upon. Now, these do not have to be uh, sequential, OK? <laughs> it's not like you go, well, there's the course interview. There's the learning. Here's the assessment. Wait a minute. That came before yes, the I lessons do. and fact, resources and all that. Here. Yes, that's I'm right. You don't do that. Do you just basically what you're doing <laughs> is, uh, do you know what KTIP is? No, I, I didn't start teaching until I was older. That is fresh in my mind because I did two uh, K-tip uh, analysis. So what I'm when I'm looking at a K-tip, 
I am not necessarily okay. looking in a nice sequence, even though it... it <laughs> so when you look at this, don't think that you have to put this in this order. We are just looking for stuff. So I would look into, and we're going to do it here in just a second, I would look into an example and I would say, can I find the course overview and introduction in here? Well, there it is. Uh, can I find the learning objectives? Are they stated somewhere? Here it is. Uh, do I have a learner interaction part? In other words, are there things on there that say, follow this link, take it to blend space, create a blend space, put it back in here? Uh, do I see a place where there's assessment and measurement? Do I have a folder called resources and materials? And a lot of times, resources and materials inside that folder might be the learner interaction. Is there anything in there course technology-wise other than the online course? You'd be surprised how many online courses are just, you know, page after page after page. And then the learner support is like, here's a space, and a lot of people will do this with a, um, just a discussion forum. And they'll say, here's a place where you can put questions. Um, you know, if you want to get fancy, you can put a Padlet in there where basically people can drop in. It's like a sticky note. And you can double click on the Padlet and a little box pops up that you can write in and then it gets stuck to the Padlet. Um, you know, the simplest way is just to put a discussion form in. But you have labeled that discussion form as places for your questions. Um, Accessibility, accessibility is always the one that a lot of people uh, kind of don't think about. But if you have a way or you have a folder that has a way that for people who have poor vision and it has explanations about how you can bring up the size of your online site, you know, something as simple as holding down the control key and, and using your scroll wheel on your mouse to uh, here is a um, extension that you can put into your Chrome browser as well as into Firefox that will allow the thing to read it to you. You know, again, accessibility doesn't have to always be there, but my goodness, if you're teaching an online course where you do have people with vision issues and or hearing and or reading, you know, it is incumbent upon you to do something about that. Now, let me show you what the thing uh, actually looks like. I'm going to click copy. on this right here. And I'm going to bring it up. Can you see this document? Yes. Yes, I can see it now. Oh, you've got the hard copy? So what I've got on my screen is not showing up on your screen? I can. Oh, I know why. Hold on a sec. You can see it or not see it. All right. So let's go through this, and let me help you understand what the assignment is going to be. And this is how you're going to, you're going to self, you are going to self-assess yourself for your final. And then I'm going to assess your uh, online presence. So what this document is supposed to be is a collegial review. This document should not be used for um, deciding whether or not we're going to let you be an online teacher. It should not be evaluative. It should only be informative. And so if we go down through here, and again, we're not breaking this out into 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. What we're doing is, is we're looking for this sort of holistic, do we see something that is a course overview and introduction? 
where instructions are made clear to how to get started. Students introduced to the purpose and structure of the course. Etiquette expectations, sometimes called netiquette, are stated. Don't yell at each other. Don't type in all caps. Uh, course and or institutional policies. In other words, if there's something about your institution or your school, about plagiarism, copyright, all of that, that should be included. Uh, if there's something you need to know before you should join this course. In other words, all of this. And it looks like it could be a lot, but really if you think about it, it's like three paragraphs worth with maybe some links. Over here, where it says points, you're basically going to look and see that this first one is very highly desirable. It has a three next to it. The ones that have a one next to it do not necessarily carry the same weight. So students are asked to introduce themselves to the class. That's a one. In your course, you may not have that. And that's fine, because it's a one. And so what you're doing here is, in, in this collegial mode, you are basically saying, um, my students don't need to introduce themselves to each other. They're already sitting in a class with me. And then you go, so that's why I didn't do it. Fine. So there's no totaling over here and going, oh, whoa, my goodness. You only have 3, 6, uh, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. You only have 14 points here. That, that's, a, uh, that's an A. But out of that, you only got 10, so that's a B. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. It's basically you are showing that I may not do a, uh, a self-introduction. Why do you need to do that if it's your course in your class? They already know who you are. Minimal technical skills expected of the student are clearly stated. Again, if you're doing it in a class, you've already done that. Now, the prerequisite knowledge may or may not be important. So as you can see right off the bat, one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four have rankings of three and two. And so they should be present. Now, when I roll down to learning objectives, you can see here every single one of these bad boys has got a three next to them. And that's to be expected. And again, this is something that you should see very easily through the introduction of standards and the objectives to the course. Why are we doing this? What are you going to get out of this? Here's the standards that it's based upon. And, you know, 2.5 is like, well, duh, I'm not going to put a learning standard for 12th grade uh, calculus in a 4th grade math class. I mean, you're not going to do it. That's silly. So this, this one is all threes. It doesn't play around. Then when you look at the next one, it has threes and twos. So what it's doing here is it's basically saying, yeah, if you're going to use your online course for assessment, you should then see that they measure the stated learning goals. The course grading policy is stated clearly. You should have specific descriptive criteria. And the assessment instruments selected are sequenced, varied, and appropriate to the student work being assessed. All right. So in that example of 3-4, we should look for assessment material that isn't just one way of assessing. There might be a, uh, a formative assessment that might be multiple choice. Make sure that we're getting the ideas across. But there also might be a project that's based in there that where kids go off and use a, a website to develop their understanding. And then 3.5, <clears throat> I tell you how 3.5 can be done very simply. In 3.5, all you have to do is in your assessment, again, using the tool of the discussion forum, and you'll see that in Schoology especially, discussion forums can be named whatever you want to call them. Um, you can put that in there and basically leave a space and say to kids, 
come into the discussion forum and tell us about um, your project, what you did. Structural materials, again, does the use of constructional materials contribute to the achievement? Uh, are they clearly stated? Are they explained? Are they the instructional materials are current? And the instructional materials present a variety of perspectives. You know, it's again, look down at the bottom. There's two here, four, five, four, six, that are ones. So they may not appear unless you have a very specific purpose that you are going to have people realize that there's extra credit or there's extensions or there's something. And then therefore, you'll want to make the distinction between required and optional materials. Alrighty, let's just keep rolling here. Learning interaction and engagement. As you can see, the first two are threes. Again, this is the idea here um, that you're using ways other than read test. That you're allowing kids to have a, a chance to either talk, write about what they've created or create a link where they can go and create and then bring back. Um, the learning activities provide opportunities. Yeah. That the interaction supports active student learning. This is something I was talking to. I'm going to do a presentation on Tuesday next week. And I was talking to the person over in Delphi today. And I was explaining to her that to me, that one of the things that uh, all online classes should do is drop you down or take you out of the structure of your online class into something else that you either create in, experience in, and then you come back to the online structure to either bring back the project you created or come back to a discussion forum to talk about what you experienced. Now this could be something as simple and I think sometimes this gets a little intimidating. But this could be something as simple as embedding a YouTube video into your course in Schoology and saying, watch this video. In the discussion forum below entitled, My Ideas About Whatever the Video Is, leave a post explaining your ideas. Read another's post and put a reply to them. In other words, you build into it the idea that you're going to create something, but then you're going to read somebody else's and put something in there. I think five, a six is almost self-explanatory. And, you know, I don't even know why they put a one next to the, that they're current and they're easily accessible. I mean, it's like, well, yeah, if you're going to put it in here, it should be. Learner support. This one can be done a couple of ways. Um, I've seen people who have a folder inside of their, well, I'll show you one. They'll have a folder inside of their online course. And there it is. So there's the folder for our friends in Blackboard. Well, look at that. It's currently suspended. But what you can do, like in Schoology, you can create a very simple, let's try help from Blackboard. Here we go. So this can just be a very simple link that you put into your course that says, Need help with understanding how to do things inside of Schoology? Follow this link. Now, if you're doing it with kids who can't look at something like this, 
and you know figure out where to go, well, you might have more specific links. Links with logging in, links with creating, links with, you know, you, you have those uh, delineated out so that if a person is having trouble, they have a place to go to. And I've got to get out of here. There we go. All right, so let me pull the, the QM back up. So that's learner support. And as you can see, that it's really not a big deal. In my mind, it's basically a folder you create, go here for help. Um, and I've seen in some instances, uh, people just put videos in there about Schoology. You look up on YouTube, find anything and everything about how Schoology works, and they just put those videos in there, especially kids who have trouble with reading. You know, they don't want to have to plow through a whole bunch of text to find their answers. I've, and then I've seen things like a young lady who had a music class, and she was using Schoology for kids to literally film themselves with their Chromebooks playing on their ukuleles that represented the activities for the class. And so the folder structure in there looked like week one, week two, week three, week four. And then there was uh, recital one, recital two, recital three, recital four. So the week one, two, three, and four was basically uh, the information. How do you make a, a G chord? How do you do this? How do you do that? And then the other folders that had to do with recital one, recital two, was them filming themselves and putting themselves uh, into a post. So they were putting their videos in there. And then the other kids came in and they learned how to uh, critically review each other, not just say, great music or you suck. They learned the language of what critical review is. She had within a folder called um, support. She also had videos in there about using the Chromebook to record videos. So when kids came to her and said, so how do I do this? She said, it's in there. Go watch the video. And it was really, 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 really simple. I mean, once they caught on to it, and to this day, because I came a part of her Schoology, uh, I'm in her Schoology course, to this day I'm still getting emails uh, from kids that have, you know, posted things in there. Accessibility. The course employs accessible technology, provides guidance. Again, you don't see eight unless you need to see eight. Uh, the course design facilitates readability, readability and minimizes distractions. Again, let's take a look at that when we actually go look at a course. Uh, because, you know, it, it's like once you see it, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, this can be the uh, folders are color-coded. Uh, the folders have clear, uh, larger type on them. Uh, there might be directions somewhere that say if you're having trouble seeing this, you know, things like that. And then the course design uh, accommodates the use of assistive technologies. Again, that has to do with if you're going to want students to be able to have the thing read to them, there are extensions that you can put into um, Chrome and Firefox that basically you can just highlight the text and it will then be read to you. All right, I'm going to drop out of here. This is the documents in live text, by the way. And let's go. It's the document that's in live text for this module, and it's also the document that is your final. And let's go look at what we've got to do today. Uh, I cleaned this up a while back because what I was finding was some of these sites just don't <laughs> don't live anymore. And so we really got down to this school district right here. So the Southwest Colorado eSchool primarily uses Schoology as its online learning platform. And 
what we've got here is we've got some examples of the courses that have been created within Schoology. And you can see the list right here. The only thing I regret is there really isn't anything here for elementary school. It's all pretty much middle and high school. Well, and in all fairness, the use of Schoology in elementary is fairly rare. The young lady from Shelby County who did hers, and when we get into Schoology, I'll show you what hers looks like. Uh, that was pretty unique, the fact that she actually had one. I have a student right now who's doing an independent study with Schoology, and she's an Algebra II teacher in high school. So, you know, these, these are what we've got to play with. And so we're going to go to this link here that takes us to Schoology.com. And then down below, that's the username and the password that we use to get in. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight mine because I'll never remember all that username. I can remember J21VA. I'm going to go to the link. And I'm going to log in. I'm not going to log in as Steve. I'm going to log in as this other thing. J21VA, I believe. And because my brain is getting old, I want to make sure. J21VA. So that's how I'm going to get in. And once I log in, I now see uh, the Schoology. Now, the way Schoology works and the way they've organized this page, you go to courses. And these are the courses that are available for us to see in this particular uh, setup. What I want you to do is to pick one. Take your time. Look around. Let's, um, let's grab the government one here. And now what we're going to do, we are going to pull up our little friendly QM. And what I would do is if I could have this, as you've done, in printed form next to me, I could go through here and do just a preliminary sweep. So I'm going to look at course overview and introduction. I come in here, and Kelly says, welcome to US government. You click on the materials tabs on the left for example of the curriculum. If you have any questions, please contact Kelly at kswindle at da 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 da, or Tracy at da 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 da. We are happy to help. Well, how many things did she just hit? <laughs> A whole bunch of so she made it clear how to get started. Uh, they're introduced to the purpose, which is over here. And then there, there's no adequate uh, explanation. OK. Of course, I mean, that might be. Let's, let's go follow this all the way out. Click on the Materials tab. Let's see what she's got. Ah. So here she has live sessions and office hours. Oh, she's got this. She's got this down so well. And so she's got a link that would allow me to come visit her. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to do that because I don't need to put that on. I don't need to have that. Thank you. I already have that. <laughs> but she already has all this stuff built in. Ooh, look at that one. Attend government live session. Neat. I'm going to use the little click button. It takes me back. Uh, and now I'm looking at what she's created. And look what she's created. Everything is right here. The structure <coughs> is beautifully outlined. Now, I want to make clear to you that when you get ready to do this, yours should look like this. 
What I mean by that is all you need is one unit. We'll go over this when we talk about the final. So all you need is just one unit and basically a series, <coughs> pardon me, a series of, uh, you know, lessons. Let's look at her what is government. She's got a recording, government notes, there's your quiz, government vocabulary. What are we missing? I mean, already I'm seeing it. What are we missing here? I really don't see anywhere, and maybe I'm just not seeing it. So let me back up a level. I see assessments. I see tests and quizzes. I see assignments. There, I saw it. It's down at the bottom. Okay. 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 So I'm seeing lots and lots of of good stuff in here. Let's go in and look at one of her folders here real fast. Uh, this is what I was looking for. So now I understand that after I've gone through this Bill of Rights thing, that she wants me to come up with my own Bill of Rights. Isn't that cool? That's, that's pretty darn cool. I also saw a discussion forum down there. Do we see anything that takes us out of this structure? Let's keep looking here. Files and leaks. Oh, my, yes. Oh, my, oh, my. So she's got tons and tons here. Let's see what happens if we click on this. And it takes me back to Blackboard. <laughs> okay. But the point is, she's got tons and tons of ways that take me somewhere else that I can uh, experience. Good stuff. Let's see what managed assessments are. My session quiz. Federalism. Let's, let's click on this and see what it does. You may only make one attempt. Let's go ahead. Okay. So she hasn't she hasn't filled this in yet, and that's fine. The structure is here, and again, I'm showing this to you because I want you to realize that. No, stay. I realize that what you're doing here is you're building a structure. Now, this is what I tell everybody who takes this class. We are building structures here. We are not filling it all in. We are putting certain things in, but we're not going to fill all of this in. If, after we're finished with this course, you want to do an independent study, where you use your Schoology site that you have created for this course and then fill it all the way in and then use it with kids, there's another class that you can get your credit for. All right, let's try another one. You got any questions so far? Well, Kelly, you're just all over the place. Let's look at Kelly's materials for 8th grade science. Ah, look at this. A very different looking structure here. So now she has course information. Let's go in here. Ah, oh my. Home run, home run. 333. Three, three. <laughs> all the way down here. Look at all this stuff that's here. Here's her introduction to Schoology how to navigate this course, her instructor information, course policies and procedures, yeah. Plagiarism, what's to turn it, oh, turn it in, we know what turn it in is. Discovery education, Ooh, let's go look at that. There you go. So in this particular example, she is covering the waterfront, boy. 
when it comes to the stuff that I need to know to do this course. And then she's got week two. Let's go dropping into there. Oh, look how pretty that is. And here's a video introduction. Read and take notes on, it, uh, on session 4.1, Properties of Matter. For this week's work, scroll down to the folder below, Properties of Matter. Let's open that up. Property of Matter's introduction, Properties of Matter concept map. Use a web tool to make a concept map. There you go. You can't get any better than this. This is really, really well done. Now, the only quibble I might have with her here Let's, let's keep going with this and see where it takes us. Now, this is a link that takes me to concept maps, network diagrams. You develop a simple mapper to provide a website on the brain. You can use it to organize it some of that years, make a concept map. That's what I've done. Okay. Uh, just jump in. Fill in the blanks, make your map. Enter the two items and so da, 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 da. All right. The thing I have a problem with here, oh, there it goes. It started working, is I think I would like to see in this one uh, some kind of video. So it's giving me what I'm going to put in the map. Here's my stuff I have to put in. But then it's basically saying, to start, be sure you make your map public, viewable to everyone, then copy the link into the Dropbox. Okay. Either take a screenshot or embed your concept map onto your portfolio page for Unit 4. Separation of matter. So, yeah, I get it. Let's go down here and see where this goes. But I think what's missing out of this one, oh my, try creatively now. No registration required. Let's go ahead and see what happens. I still say, and this would fall under, here's your formative assessment for the evening, Evelyn. Where would this fall? If you were looking at this through the rubric, through the QM rubric. In other words, the fact that, okay, you've got these sites, we go somewhere, we create, we bring it back, but what is missing? I would argue that it's missing out of the learner support. Um, it's missing out of the course technology, and it's missing out of accessibility. The fact that I don't have anything that shows me in a video format, or a PDF for that matter, that shows me how to create in this thing. Now, the argument that you could probably make is, oh, Steve, she's showing this in the class. She's showing them how to do this in the class. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and if, and if you are doing that in the class, then you can just say when you create your Schoology that this was done in the class. Hey, it's time to sync. I'm going to tell you yes. Go ahead and sync. Okay, so somebody's already, and here's where she has them, submit the assignment. Oh, this is nice. Very well done. Notice there is one thing. Look at this. So do you see my little backward? I don't have a backward thing here. But I do have a link that does take me back. But it throws me all the way back to here. Hi, Kelly. I'm all the way back at Kelly. So if I'm in materials, let's look at this one more time. So if I go into materials, and I go in the week two, there it is. So she does have it but I have to get back up to the top of week two. Fair enough. Here's the materials index. In other words, everything that you need to have to do this. All right, let's look at one more. So that was science. We did government. I'm not going to do Spanish because I don't speak Spanish. Uh, let's go throw. Let's go look at a map. This is a great. It's Kelly again. Hi, Cal. Let's go over and look at Kelly's materials. 
And again, she's got a folder called Teacher Info. She's got a folder called Live Sessions, Recordings, Math Office Hours. So she is using the Collaborate tool. I find this really interesting. Let's see. Pre-algebra live sessions on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Link for live sessions in case you need the actual link. Math office hours, so on and so on. Recorded sessions. Let's look and see if there. What happens if we click on that? Well, you knew where we were going. <laughs> it takes us back to Blackboard. Okay, that's interesting. I, I tell you what, I'm going to do a little digging and see how she's putting these. Uh, well, I guess you're just putting Blackboard links in, and she's getting there. Uh, where am I? Five sessions. Unit 8, 2D, and 3D geometry. And here we go. Here we go. <coughs> Pretty straightforward stuff here. So as you can see, you first sort of do a cursory, let's walk through the pages. Let's see where things are with your uh, document. You know, as I said, print it out. Have it sitting there. And then all you're going to do for the assignment in live text is you're basically going to go through here and score this thing. Was it a three? Did we find the tools? Well, let's go all the way back up here to the top. Instructions make it clear to get started and find various course materials. Sure did. Give me a three. And all you're going to do is just work your way down through there. <coughs> now, down here, what you're going to do is course intro. Clearly stated as to where to go to find materials. The instructor introduction clearly identified. You get the idea. So what you're doing is you're scoring over here and you're spelling things correctly. Sorry about that. You're scoring over here, and you're giving your reflections on just one of these, obviously. Not all of these. Uh, let's see what C all does. Nope, you don't want to do that. <laughs> that's that's all of Steve's stuff. Don't do that. Well, there's no. No, there's some stuff in here. Oh, look, here's an example of English 10th grade. Oh. Okay. There's some, there's some interesting stuff in here. Uh, if I go into that one, what do I get? Okay. So that one's kind of blocked off to me. All right, fine. I'll just keep going in through the courses part. Courses is the structure, the top structure of Schoology, okay? So you can have multiple courses, or you can have multiple periods. In other words, period one, period two, period three, period four, as an organizational tool. Or you can have uh, a math, if you're elementary, you could have one of these called math. You could have one of these called language arts, one of these called science. Or you could just have one called, you know, Mrs. Mayor's fifth grade science class. Okay? I'm surprised that that doesn't show up. Oh, there it is. That's an English one. Let's go look at English real fast. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> And we'll pop over here to materials. Isn't it interesting? I mean, you see at the top level, this uh, Kelly must be a resource teacher for this uh, county. 
you can see where she basically has organized the lot landing pad, okay, where you land when you come in. But then once you get into here, you're starting to see the teacher's individual take on what they have here. And so I'm sitting here looking at Unit 7, Debate, okay? Unit 7, Debate 1. Welcome, it's time to debate. Setting the stage, prelude to Unit 7. Okay? I'm, there is, what I love about this uh, little thing is there's plenty of examples here that you can, you know, if, if you want to look for something with your rubric sitting there and go, wow, this matches it almost bang, 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 and then use that when you start thinking about building your own course, go forth and do. Uh, I've had some people who go in and kind of look for the ones that sort of run off the rails that really don't do the QM very well, and that's fine. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. But I think there's enough there's enough examples here that you can find a good one to do this, and then you can uh, actually use them when you start thinking about uh, how to build a Schoology course, which we'll start next week. I think we're starting next week. Yeah, because we'll be back to our normal time next week, and we'll we're going to go through Schoology slowly because there is it is such a rich environment that I need to kind of we need to all kind of hold hands as we work our way through it so we can see how to do things. That's why I love this as well because we have such good examples here uh, with some that aren't so good, frankly, that we can look at these. Let's, let's go dive into Spanish for Hi Kelly. All right, Spanish one, Spanish two. So this is a you know this is a good example because here we go. We she obviously has uh, two different kinds of Spanish instructions. So Spanish one, Spanish three. Let's go down here and. And I'm already in way over my head. I, okay, this week you'll be completing the unit, I know that word, six post assessment. If you do not do as well as you'd like on any activities in the unit, I would be a jury duty. <laughs> yeah, you can't get any much better than this in terms of introduction and here's what's going to go on. So, you know, this, this one's not bad. A little light, it looks like, on the, let's look right down here and see what sections one through six do. Okay. So this is more a test prep kind of thing. I get it. All right. Evelyn, do you have any questions? I think we've got this pretty well covered, don't you? In terms of what we're doing, let me go back over here and see if you're still with me. Hi, Evelyn. I have one question. How many tabs can you have open at one time, Evelyn? I have one question. <laughs> Look at all these tabs I've got open. Already. Okay, I'm still a little confused when I when I go back and I'm using the uh, matrix. Do I go back and say, go "Yes, girl. they've got this. This is a three. This is a three, yes, two, three. Okay, let me type. I'm losing you. All right. Right. No, I, I heard what you said, and the answer is absolutely yes. And so what you're doing is, now remember, this is not evaluative. You know, there's no gotcha here. What you're doing is, is you're going through and you're looking to see, is that rubric section one, how well is it covered? And so what it tells you when you look at it, those first, what is it, three, the first three ones, uh, the first three ones, the first substandards are, no, two. 
The first two are rated three. In other words, they ought to be there. Students are introduced to the purpose and structure of the course. The structures make clear. It's not that important. To find various course components. If you put a one there, what is it telling us? That it's really not that important. And if you put a zero there, it means oh, I couldn't find it anywhere. Okay? Now, as you can see, right, which if you go back then, and when you're sitting and looking at it, you would say, well, Quality Matters think that's pretty important. It gave it a three. But your thing looked more like, hey, here's the class. <laughs> you know, and, and you're saying, well, that's just a one, because you really haven't gone through and given me any real indication as to how we're going to get started and where to find various components. You know, when you think about it, what did Kelly do every single time? Let's go back and look real fast. And as I said, Kelly is probably a uh, resource teacher in their in their district. But every single class we look at, here's Kelly's statement. Welcome to the U.S. government. Click on the materials tab on the left. So already Kelly is telling me where to go and what to do. And then when I clicked on the materials tab, now I'm starting to see things where it's telling me to go here for live sessions and office hours. Okay? Now, this looks a little little empty. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, at this point, I'm coming into this and I'm going, what, what, what am I supposed to do here? Okay? So in this instance, let's go back and look. Instructions make clear how to get started and where to find various course components. Three, which Kelly did for you. Thank no. You. Students are introduced to the, to the purpose and structure of the course. Huh. You see that anywhere? Let's go to look at unit one. What is government? So already they're throwing me into what it is I'm doing here. Welcome to week two. Ah. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, so if, if I were sitting with this person and having a conversation, I would say, what's unit one? What are we supposed to be doing here? When I go into unit one, what am I supposed to be doing here? Well, you go into Unit 1, Session 1. In other words, there'd be directions sitting out here at this level, at this top level. Excuse me. My <laughs> I'm clicking and things aren't going anywhere. But at that top level, right here where it says Unit 1, there we are, I would have had something underneath here that would be, and I can't show you that because I don't have any rights here. I will show you that when we start building Schoology. I would have something here that would explain how to do it. And then when I go in here, I would have something here besides just what is government that would say, go into this folder, read week two announcements. Because now once you get to here, not too bad. She's starting to, or he, whoever made this, is starting to let me know uh, what's going on. And then I roll down through here, and now it's starting to let me see and know what's going on. So Ms. Ledford says, click Materials Unit 1, Session 2, Live Session and Assignments. Monday at 1, remember, live sessions aren't optional. <laughs> if you're not there, you got to watch the recording. So she does a very nice job here. She's letting me see and understand how this is going to work. My only question would be, and you know, you can call me a nitpicker if you want, I would have wanted to see something here that said something as simple as start here, click here, go here. You know, something like that. And again, I might have, if I had more than one of these, and I do, unit one, section two, three, four, different colors. You know cues to let kids know what it is we're doing. 
so that's that's what I'm saying that you do. Is you kind of go through here and you kind of jump back and forth looking at it. Uh, after a while, after you've looked at it, you, you can start seeing a, a trend in things. And, you know, I'm not going to argue with learning objectives. You know, I, they're there. So I'm, I'm going to write down this list and go three, 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 three. I see them. Uh, and then the reflection, something as simple as learning objectives are clearly stated. Now, I don't think did she actually say they're tied to anything in Colorado? Let's look real fast here. Under the week two announcement. Well, here's our project. See it down here? Democracy project. Um, okay, she gave some of that. No. Okay. So she's telling me what we're going to do, but she doesn't reference anything, uh, you know, standard-wise. You know, assessment and measurement clearly stated. Structural materials uh, clearly contribute to the uh, advancement. That is my phone ringing. So I've just turned it off. Um, you, you get the idea. I would spend the time getting to know the course and looking for these things, and then pop back in here and do it. Now, let's look at how it looks in live text. Because you can do this one of two ways. You can do it in live text. I wouldn't. <laughs> what I would do is I would download that document, the one I just was sitting here with. I don't know where you just came from. But I would download that document, and I would work from it and then I would upload it into the live text as an attachment. Now, when we did this, in, when we would do this in class, uh, what we did is we we got into groups and people worked with each other and they did it uh, together, and you know then put everything into the live text. All right, let me go find our class. Okay, so we are in Module 4. I have no idea why everything has decided to run so slowly. There's the document right there, and basically all you're going to do is open it, obviously, fill it out, and then just add it back in as an attachment. Okay? I would go in take the time, I would go in and take the time to find a course that speaks to me. In other words, I'm a science teacher, I'm a math teacher. Um, you know, if I'm an elementary school teacher, find the subject that speaks to you. And then look at the way that they have built that Schoology course. Now, if you get into one, like they did with the Spanish one, and we're kind of like, oh, there's not a whole lot in here. You know, run for the run for the door. Get out of that one, and go find one yes, that Tom. does have a lot of the stuff that's in the QM, so you can see how it would look. 
All righty. No. Do you have any other questions for me? All righty. All right, we're going to call it. A, we're going to call it an evening. Uh, you know how to re reach out to me. Uh, I think this one is very straightforward. No, you you don't know. Yes, I'm good to go. Are you there, Evelyn? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you're good to go. All right.